Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Board Game Blog number 32. Uh, today is going to be kind of a general blog. I'm not really going to have an exact topic. But I do have two main topics I'm going to kind of dovetail out of. Uh, the first, you can probably see in the description of this video. So I was on a episode of The Long View as a guest uh, with Mr. Jeff Gamble, and we discuss, uh, you know, heavy themes in games or difficult themes. And we cover a lot of games. Uh, one of the games I'll cover a little bit later in this video. But uh, so I would definitely just take a look at it. I don't want to spoil too much of it here. Uh, but give it a listen. I think you have a lot to chew on and hopefully find something very interesting uh, because as this hobby sort of evolves and grows and, you know, finds its boundaries, so to speak, and breaks boundaries, uh, more and more difficult themes are going to be tackled, uh, sometimes successfully and sometimes not. Uh, so that should be pretty interesting. Uh, the second part is going to kind of dovetail into a blacklist, uh, basically five negative reviews, if you will. Now, I've been uh, more than unhappy uh, with how I've approached uh, the negative review aspect of things. You know, I started as a geek list, and then I started kind of blopping in, in these uh, blogs, so to speak. Um, so one thing, I'm gonna, I'll get back to the main point here, that I did about a month or so ago was I kind of asked folks on Facebook and Twitter and Board Game Geek and stuff, uh, you know, what do you find missing in, in uh, videos and stuff like that with board games and what would you like to see more of and less of and all that kind of stuff. And through some discussions with some folks, I had to have like a revelation or a vision of some sort where uh, I was like, you know, driving down like the desert on a photo safari. So if you've noticed in some of my more recent videos, I'm doing this whole blend between like me and black and white talking, you know, going back and forth between photos of the game. I had this sort of vision of like on a safari and it was nice because you could get in these cool angles that you don't normally get with just like the hands over here or like looking at me at looking at the game and stuff. And, and when you play the game, you're like, you're like in it, you know, you're down under the game almost in some ways uh really especially if it has miniatures or something you know really gets into the game so i was able to take pictures of different angles and you know like set up cool looking shots and stuff uh, so that's nice and so that's something i think i can do to bring into the negative reviews i feel like i do uh you know give you good reasons why but if i can keep a photo record of these games because sometimes it's like months uh before i accrue you know, my critical mass of five games to review negatively, I can keep those photo records and then that'll give you something to visually look at while I'm here blabbing. Uh, so there's that. Anyway, uh, that's kind of where I'm leaning to. So I'm going to, uh, you know, talk about five games that I uh, don't like and they're gonna kind of go from kind of don't like to uh, a d disgusting, <laughs> you know, at the bottom. So the fifth one is like not so bad. And, but I just still really don't like it. And then the first one is like, I want to set on fire. Uh, so let's just go ahead and jump into that. Now, the first one is, uh, the number five one is Heroes Wanted. And this is a game that I didn't really know what to expect. And I didn't really like it, but now I've been talking to all these different people and they really, really enjoy it and all this stuff. And I feel like, yeah, I feel like I might've missed something. So this is kind of why it's higher up on the list. But I don't think so. I mean, the problem that I have with the game is the mechanics of battle and movement card play. Now, if you're not familiar with Heroes Wanted, it's a superhero themed game. It has this really cool mechanic where you take a top card and a bottom card and one part is like your hero's head or torso and then the other part is their legs. And so you build up like a weird thing like super broccoli or uh, you know some other things. You may have like a, a little chimpanzee in a robot suit with a uh, legs of like a you know gangster's trousers or a raccoon head on top of a i don't know a vegetable or something and then you do something with uh, similar with the villains where you mix and match those and that's really cool and really funny and you know a lot of the powers and stuff are cool and the different maps and missions that you can go on are interesting um, and you can fight each other and the villains. So the setting is really, really neat. Uh, but the card play of like how you move around and fight stuff is just, it feels very rote to me and like not engaging at all. And it feels like there should be more variety or there or something, or maybe some deck building where you can kind of change things up. Cause depending on how you build your character, you get access to like seven cards or 10 cards or something. This is why I want to take pictures <laughs> so I can remember the details. Uh, so, but it felt very rote and mechanical and really just not that great at all and not interesting to play from a mechanical sense. And I had more fun just kind of looking through the cards and finding different things. But I think I'm the only person on the planet that really 
had a reaction of like, wow, this game just really is very flat and blasé. So take that for what you will. There's plenty of nice uh, videos out there uh, of a lot of quality folks that do this kind of thing. And I would definitely take a look at the game. Uh, not one that I really care for at all though. Uh, the next one on the list, number four, would be Shadowrun Crossfire. This is another one that has uh, merit to it. Now, this is a difficult one because the actual sort of mechanical game play of a single session of the game is fairly interesting. Uh, now, it's set in this futuristic sort of cyberpunk slash fantasy theme, and it's a cooperative deck builder where the game is kind of flipping encounters and, and bad events and things that are tripping you up throughout the game, and you're trying to accomplish and you know defeat these different objectives. And the reward that you get at the end of the game is some uh, influence points or something, karma points. And you get those, and you spend those to upgrade your character. Now the actual gameplay of it can be very out of balance. You can get games where you're just dealt like, just destroyed in like 15 minutes or even less. It's crazy sometimes, some of the games. But then you can have games that can be very tense and very sort of, you know, on the edge and you're not sure if you're gonna win or lose. And then when you succeed, uh, you know, it's very satisfying in that way. The problem with the game for me is it doesn't seem to know where it sits. Now it has, I think, three or four scenarios if you down some, download some online. And there's a few issues with it. One is this whole, like, you know, how you upgrade your character. Now you get a certain number of karma points when you succeed a scenario, sometimes you'll half succeed and then you can get upgrades and sticker your guy. And the stickers really aren't the end of the world because you can actually sticker them and then put them back on the sticker sheet. They come off pretty easily. Um, but there's no reason for them to be stickers at all. You could just write it down in Sharpie on the, on the player board. Or you could just have tokens and just write down and remember what tokens you had on a guy. I don't know why they're stickers. It's, but again, a lot of people got really hung up on that. And I'm not that hung up on it. It just seems to me silly. It could be something else very easily. And the fact that you have to like, you know, play a scenario and then do it like two or three times and succeed that many times, it feels like you're just sort of, you can almost just roll a die and say, okay, did we win this scenario? Okay, yes, I have the karma points or no, I don't have the karma points. And so now I can get these abilities or not get these abilities. Um, and that, that kind of adds back into the mechanics of the game where everything feels kind of like your victory or loss is baked into how the cards are shuffled and how they're randomly dealt because either sometimes choice where it's like because you can actually you know attack obstacles in front of your uh, your friends that are you know helping you to to win the game or you can attack the ones in front of you so that part is interesting but again it does not interesting enough it feels like it's still pretty much baked in and you can easily suss out and decide between the group of you you know who is going to uh, you know what the best move is going to be uh, so at the end of the game it feels like i just I'm not actually having any impact on what's going to happen in the game. And it feels like it's like a couple of design tweaks or something. You know, I hate to second, sound like I'm second guessing designers, but just for me, it feels like it's a couple of tweaks away from really being something very interesting. Uh, so that's kind of a problem with it. Uh, you know, it's it just feels like it's baked in and I could just say, okay, well, let's play scenario like 10 times, you know, and then try to get enough karma points to get the extra you know, special abilities and then play it on hard mode or play like the dragon scenario, which is supposed to be the really hard one. Um, when I could just set up a different uh, configuration of character and just play the dragon scenario with all these cool buffs, but it doesn't give you any setup to do that. So you're just kind of like, there's a lot of stabbing in the dark and it doesn't feel like real progression. It just feels like grinding, you know? And that's the thing I hate about, um, you know, at least like an online RPG, the grinding was the worst part of that. And they've like taken that and you know, it's thrown that into a deck building game. Whereas, you know, this game gets compared a lot of times to Pathfinder, the adventure card game, where that doesn't really have grinding at all. I mean, I had to maybe repeat a scenario, each, you know, an individual scenario, maybe two or three times at most, and sometimes you'd beat it the first time you played it. Um, but it was more story-driven. It wasn't like the most story-driven game ever, 
but it, you know, I think it, Pathfinder Adventure Card Name is, is undersold in terms of, you know, the amount of story that's present. If you're playing with a lot of fun players that can add in and sort of fill in the gaps, you know, based on what cards are dealt out, then the game is awesome. I mean, you can really have a nice RPG-like experience. It feels like this it does not even come close to Pathfinder Adventure Card Game to me in, in that regard. I would say if you want this card-driven RPG experience, go for that. Yes, it's kind of flip a card and roll, but there's more story in that. And this is just like grind, 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 grind you know, over and over and over and over again. But the actual physical mechanics of how you buy cards and get cards, that's pretty interesting. There's a good core here. So, you know, take for that with what it's worth. But at the end of the day, it's like, I don't want to keep playing this over and over and over again just so I can add a sticker to my, my guy. So anyway, so it fell flat. Number three is Alien Uprising. Uh, still in the category of, I think, you know, decent uh, design. I'm, I'm going to get in trouble for this later. But... Um, it, it it falls really flat for me. It's very hard. It's too hard in some ways. And it's weird because you're like always running out of aliens and stuff that are going to surround you. So basically the theme of the game is you crash landed on a planet and you're trying to recover parts and repair your ship and get off the planet before you're overwhelmed by these aliens, uh, you know, swarming around you. Now, again, with the core mechanics of the game are pretty interesting, but the game ends up being... A bunch of like run out of here, grab this random thing, flip it over. What is this? Is this you know part of the engine, or is this part of some other thing that you need to repair the ship, and then run back and just whoa, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, aliens are coming, aliens are coming, and that every game is like that. It's like okay, where are the parts this time? Or run over here, or run back, get overwhelmed by aliens, run over here, run back, or get overwhelmed by aliens. It doesn't really change up that much, and it's just like. Oh, cool, we get to push 50 aliens down this quadrant and 50 aliens down this quadrant. Like at the end of the day, it, like it works, everything, all the parts and the puzzle pieces fit together, but I, again, I don't feel like I'm having an impact on the game. And this is one of those things, like I think the game actually is like sort of mathematically designed pretty good. I mean, it works and you can kind of, you know, get through it, but the when you step away of get above all those mechanics the game is like nothing i mean you're not doing anything you're just like like i said you're just playing fetch and trying to dodge aliens but that's all the game is you hardly fight so that is another game that i'm blacklisting because i don't like it at all i was very disappointed in this game because i'm a huge fan of most of the games that i've played from mr lanius uh, that he's designed so anyway that's a heartbreaker <laughs> All right, so the number two game is Chaos Ball. And this is a game that I actually sort of enjoyed the first couple of times I played it and then fell out of a cliff. And I really wanted to like this game because I played Blood Bowl, kind of like that. It's a little bit fiddly for my taste. I still enjoy it. I've got to play it with somebody that, uh, you know, knows the game uh, so they can correct me all the rules mistakes I'm going to make. I really like Dread Ball. Uh, it's not in my collection. I gave it to my friend who, the only person I played Blood Bowl with. And I really like that game though. I would recommend Dread Ball highly. It's just, I'm not going to play it with anybody but him. And Chaos Ball is like, oh, this would be good. This is, this, you know, it's a little simpler. I can play it with my son even. And it's going to have a lot of armies and stuff. Mm. There's a lot, I have a lot of issues with this game, and I know a lot of people like this game, but the main, 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 main problem I have is this whole card play thing. So in this game, you'll do some action stuff, and then you maybe have a combat or something, and then you play. each player plays a card. Well, if I play a card of value one, I can never play a card of value one again for that round. And a lot of times, you're gonna get dealt a hand of cards where you have like a bunch of twos and a bunch of threes, and so you're pretty much screwed out of playing the cards. And if you ever play a card that you've already played, you immediately lose whatever contest you're gonna have. That's dumb. <laughs> I, I really don't like that at all because it feels like, hey, we're gonna have combat and then you're gonna get to roll dice and I'm not. <laughs> what? But, it, and you're gonna roll dice and then you automatically lose because you rolled the dice you already rolled earlier in the turn. Well, I, what? Like, I don't like that at all. And it, it has, has this area control thing, which I kind of liked. I feel like this, there's, some, there's something there, and I might be missing something there, because in Dread Ball and Blood Bowl, you score points by, you know, throwing the ball or, 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 or you know, at a point in Dread Ball or getting a ball across the end zone. This one, you can do that. You can take the ball and take it a place. But you can also stand in a spot and get a point there. 
that's kind of interesting but i ended up really not liking that part of it i can see why it's there because it has less of this sort of support and you know building walls and and, 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 and you know contributing you know modifiers uh to the dice and how you position your players uh, it's a little bit more confined that way so i see why it's there and I, it's not that bad uh, but it's just like another piece of uh, you know on top of the card play now i do like i only had the base set of it and so each team has its own little special ability which is kind of cool uh, i only had the four teams so i can kind of see that being somewhat interesting uh, and you have also your um uh, what was it called you know like the little leader guys that weren't a part of the team but they had like their own little special uh you know special elite player thing that they could do those are pretty interesting but a lot of times it came down to that card play and boy, I just really was like, well, this is stupid. It's, I can't even play it, you know? It's like, well, let me at least roll a die or something, or at least like play the card for, you know, every card counts as one if you've already played it or something. You would have sometimes an interesting choice if you had a nice spread of cards, and you can, yes, you can discard cards and things like that and get new cards, but, you know, I just, I have these. I have all these to play. So, anyway, better be dang good. <laughs> All right, the last one is a pile of friggin' garbage and I want to set it on fire and that's bed pans and broomsticks. And I never played this game and I will never play this game because I, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up when I read the back of the box and I was like, okay, this seems like old people with either dementia or Alzheimer's are trying to escape their old folks home. All right, that's dumb for a theme. And then I'm like, okay, well, let's open the box, start reading the rules. And then like on the first page, it says, oh, these people were so forgetful and dumb that they can't remember what the layout of the old folks home looks like. So we're going to have a tile based game and you're going to rebuild the old folks home as you play the game and you're trying to escape and go on some field trip like some silly old people do. Now, that is a big problem. And I will talk about that more in the podcast that I mentioned earlier to you in the video. Uh, but this is a game I don't have to play it to review it because the theme is so friggin' stupid and the people that designed the game and published the game, I'm sure you're awesome people and awesome people make mistakes, but that is a friggin' stupid theme to have. Now here's the problem with the theme. The theme by itself, let's say talk about it in a vacuum. People do get dementia and they do get Alzheimer's and that is a problem that people have. And if you wanted to address it in a game, you very much, you know, I'm all ears if you're going to address it, but if you're going to address it as a comedy, I will just say you have the right to do that and I have the right to hate the hell out of it. So um, there you go. That's a stupid theme and that's my own bias and I definitely have personal reasons for hating it. That, that's, not, that's not an acceptable theme to me and that should not, that, be, that game entering my house <laughs> was going to get kicked right out of my house because that does not come inside my doorway. And that's, you know, this is, uh, this is my family and we live here. Uh, so that kind of theme is awful. And I think, I don't think you should be ashamed of it, but I'm just letting you know, because I'm not trying to come at people personally, but holy crap, I will set that shit on fire. <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's a little bit emotional for you there. Um, but I would say, be careful with your themes. And, you know, we talked about this game in the podcast and also lap dance. Uh, you know, it's a game coming out and it seems similar where you're sort of making fun of people or doing comedy. Now, comedy is one thing. Comedy is tricky, though, uh, with a game. So I think if you got to be careful what you're making fun of. And so there is some possibility for, I think, a considerate approach. To, but to do it in a careless way um, is careless. And so you should just be uh, aware uh, that people are going to call you out for being careless. Anyway, so I'm kind of rambling now because uh, I'm a little exhausted. But so that is uh, my little blacklist. And so definitely listen to the podcast. Okay, thanks. <laughs>